their classic, super awesome, masterpiece animated films into live action. Do not like it. Always makes my sphincter tighten. So, a lot of you have been desperately wanting to know what I think of it, Erod. Uh, you're gonna bust it. What's gonna happen here? You're gonna do an honest review? No and no. God no. Um, so if you just want to know how I felt about it, that I love it, that I hate it, um, just gonna go ahead and tell you now. If you just that's all you want to know, you don't want to watch the rest of the video. Um, I just thought it was okay. Just thought it was okay. There you go. Uh, if you want to know why, keep watching. So. To be fair, I have divided my thoughts into a positive column and a negative column. I'm going to go through the positive column first. That means I'm going to end with the negative. So those of you who love the movie can stop the video before I get into the negatives. But here are the positives. Number one, I think it was excellent that they casted Emma Watson as Belle. That was excellent casting. As per usual, she did a fantastic job. And... I like how she pushed for the character to have certain traits um, that would enhance the character of Belle. Um, one of those traits being that she was an inventor. I love that. Um, it explains further why the people in the town think that she's weird. Because just reading to me isn't that weird. Yes, it was at a time when most people were illiterate, but um, most people that were illiterate still wanted to know how to read. They were illiterate because they didn't have the means to read. Being Having the ability to re read, read doesn't necessarily equate to, like, witchcraft or something like that. However, you know, making a machine that washes clothes on its own, it looks like magic. It looks like witch, witchcraft. And most women were not educated, so where did she get the knowledge to build this machine? So um, I like that. Okay, I think that was incredibly well done. In the same vein as uh, Bell being an inventor, um, I like a lot of the elements in the script that further expanded upon or explained certain parts of the story that were not explained at all or just glossed over in the original movie. Um, like the spell that turned a beast and the inhabitants of the castle um, into you know, a monster and household items also made everybody forget about them. Um, and that makes sense. Obviously, the people that work at the castle would have family down in the town. And obviously, if there's a castle right next to a town, people would know about this castle, but nobody seems to know about it in the original movie. So, yeah, I thought that was those were good, fun little details to know, especially if you're a hardcore fan of the original movie. I also thought it was amazing how star-studded the cast of this movie was. It's unbelievable. Ian McKellen and Ewan McGregor, Emma Thompson, just the, the cast, Stanley Tucci, just the cast went on and on and on and on of amazing people. Audra McDonald being in it. Now, keep in mind that the original person who sang the Beauty and the Beast theme was Celine Dion, who's considered to be one of the greatest singers in the world. So, obviously, they have to find somebody to match Celine Dion uh, to sing the song in this movie, and they got Audra McDonald. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. You know, usually they get whoever the latest crappy popular pop singer, uh, but they didn't do that. They got a respected award-winning singer, um, and I appreciate that. That was really cool. Um, all right. Oh, and one more thing that I thought was really well done. And I warn you, this will lead into the negatives, okay? Um, one more thing that I thought was great was that final moment, or the addition, the idea that the inhabitants of the castle, if the beast didn't break the curse, the inhabitants would turn into the actual household objects that they would turn into. They would, you know, grow solid and just be inanimate objects and basically die. That was a great addition to the plot because it heightened the drama and the urgency and the necessity for the beast to break the curse, okay? Um, and that final moment, you know, when they're transforming at the end and Cogsworth is turning into a real clock, he's literally running out of time. And Ian McKellen just beautifully delivers the line that, to Lumiere, to Ewan McGregor, um, 
that it was an honor to serve with you. And Ewan McGregor says, no, the honor was all mine, mon ami. And it got to me. It got to me hard. And here I'm getting into the negatives now. Um, the problem was, the problem with that beautiful moment is that the only reason why it touched me so much was because of this movie. This movie did a beautiful job of introducing these characters and making you love these characters. The current movie didn't do that as much, okay? Just think about that. Try to watch that movie without any prior knowledge of Lumiere or Mrs. Potts or Chip or any of those characters or Cogsworth, okay? The movie doesn't do a very good job of introducing them or making you like them at all. Um, if you like them, it's because they did something cool or something funny here or there, but this movie right away does an incredible job of introducing these characters and showing you why they're likable and what they do, what they don't like, and who they are. Um, and the only reason I felt anything during that beautiful moment at the end, as well as it was performed, was because of the cartoon movie. The movie just didn't do a good job of introducing those characters at all. Going back to one of the positives, yes, I loved how Belle was an inventor, but there's a huge fucking problem with that. It never comes into play in 